Hello everyone, costume teacher here, and I'm here today to read to you chapter seven of The World According to Humphrey. All right, let's get started. So there's just a couple of vocabulary words in this chapter that I want to make sure you are familiar with before we start reading. The first one is accent. Can everyone say accent? Accent means the pronunciation of a language. So we have many different accents even within our own country of the United States, as well as many different accents around the world. Perhaps you are familiar with some, or you have some in your family from people that live around the country and around the world. You'll probably hear me sometimes when I read. I tend to have a Minnesota accent when I get excited since that's where I'm from. So if you hear, oh, yeah, or you betcha when I'm talking, then that's my native accent coming out. <laughs> All right, another word for the chapter is intimidated. Can everyone say that? Intimidated. Intimidated means to frighten someone in order to get them to do what you or someone wants. Not recommended, but it's still a vocabulary word. So it must be something in chapter seven. All right, well, let's get started. If you are, oh, haha, that's kind of fun. If you are reading along in the book, chapter seven begins on page 50. And if you are just watching this lovely little hamster, then you can just listen and enjoy. All right, so let me find page 50. And this is chapter seven, Saya Speaks Up. Fun fact, I wasn't sure how to say this character's name, so I contacted the author and asked how the author would like this character's name to be said. And they told me it is Saya. So, all right. With that said, let's hear chapter seven. On Friday afternoon, Saya's father, Mr. Nasiri, picked, up, picked us up after school. He had a friendly smile and gentle eyes, but he was as quiet as his daughter. Saya lived in a tall building, so Mr. Nasiri carried my cage up one, two, three flights of stairs to their clean and quiet apartment. Mrs. Nasiri opened the door for us. She spoke to her husband and daughter, but I couldn't exactly understand what they were saying. Hummy, hummy, a little voice called out. Saya's little brother, Derek, toddled toward the door to greet me. Say, Humphrey. <laughs> Saya gently corrected him. Hummy, he said. Then the series put my cage in the living room, right in the middle of a big table. Then they pulled up the chairs so they could all sit and stare into my cage. It seemed as if they were waiting for something to happen. So I decided to give them a show. First, I spun on my wheel for a while. Then I climbed up the side of the cage and dived down into a pile of soft paper. They were obviously impressed with my performance as they talked quietly. The funny thing is, I couldn't understand a word they were saying. No wonder Saya got 100% on all of her vocabulary tests. She and her family knew a lot more words than I did. They finally went into the kitchen to eat dinner. Later, while the rest of the family watched television, Saya's mother quietly sat by my cage watching me. She seemed nice, nice, nice. Eventually, it was bedtime for the Nasiris, but after the lights were out, Saya slipped out of her room and came back to my cage and whispered to me. I could understand her again. Now you know my secret, Humphrey, she whispered. My family doesn't speak English, 
Well, my dad does a little, but he's shy about it. Mom hasn't learned any English at all, and Derek's too little. I understand. Squeak, I squeaked. That's why I don't like to talk in class, she explained. I don't talk like the other kids. I'm afraid they'll laugh at my accent. That happened to me when I was little. But you don't sound different, I frantically squeaked. I understand you're just fine. Unfortunately, she didn't understand me. All she heard was squeak, squeak, squeak. I guess maybe I have an accent too. How many of you speak another language at home? Ooh, that's a lot of hands. You guys should be teaching us how to say some of your language. That would be awesome. <laughs> but I have an idea that maybe you could help me teach mom English, Saya continued. Glad to help out if I can, I squeaked to her. <laughs> You're a real friend, Saya replied. See, she understood me after all. The next day, I dozed until late afternoon when Saya led her mother back to my cage, led her mother back to my cage. Humphrey only understands English, Mama, Saya said. Speak English. Say Humphrey. Saya's mom looked a little frightened, but she tried. Humphrey, she said. Honey, Derek said as he raced into the room and climbed on his mother's lap. Say hello, Humphrey, Saya gently instructed her mother. Hello, Humphrey, Mrs. Nasiri said. I squeaked, hello, <laughs> right back, and she broke into a huge smile. Hello, she said. Good job, I said. Well, things went swimmingly from then on. In a matter of hours, Saya's mom was saying, how do you do? Nice to meet you. Would you like some water? I did. Thank you. <laughs> Even when Saya and Derek left to go to the store with their father, Mrs. Nasiri kept on talking. I let her know I understood what she was saying by wiggling my whiskers and hanging by one paw from the top of my cage. Good boy, Humphrey, she said. <laughs> Saya and her father were amazed at Mrs. Nasiri's progress when they returned. The family spent the rest of the evening practicing English. First, Saya pretended to be a guest at the door. She went to the hall and knocked. Can you all knock? <laughs> her mother opened the door. Hello, Saya, she said. Won't you come in? Then Derek went out and knocked. Can we get some more knocking? Mrs. Nasiri opened the door and said, hello, Derek, won't you come in? He rushed and toddled right over to the table shouting, Humphy, Humphy. <laughs> Next, Saya convinced her dad to practice English with her mom. What time it is? asked Mrs. Nasiri. What time is it? Sias corrected her. Mrs. Nasiri got it right the second time. Then Dad looked at his watch. 7.15, he answered. Would you like some tea? Mrs. Nasiri asked. Yes, please. I would like some tea, Mr. Nasiri answered. Guess what? They had a tea party right on my table. As a reward for all of their hard work, I spun my wheel as fast as my legs would go, and they all cheered. <laughs> Later, after the lights were out, Saya slipped out of her room to talk to me again. Thank you, Humphrey, she whispered. My mom says she's ready to go to English class now, but I wish you were the teacher. So do I, I squeaked, and 
I meant it. <laughs> there were more English lesson lessons on Sunday and Saya showed Derek how to clean out my cage. Suddenly, the boy began to giggle. <laughs> Humphrey Boop, he yelled. His English was improving too. <laughs> on Sunday night, Saya gathered her family together again. I want to teach you the American song, she said. Then she opened her mouth and began to sing, Oh Say Can You See by Dawn's Early Light. <gasps> do you know that song? Hmm, I do too. <laughs> I stood up just like we do in the classroom when the Star Spangled Banner is being sung, but I'd never heard it sung like that before. Saya had the most <sighs> beautiful voice in the world. It was like a gentle breeze. No, like rippling waters. No, it was, well, it was beautiful. If only our classroom mates in room 26 could hear her, which gave me the start of another idea. But I didn't have time to think much at all because soon the whole family was singing the Star Spangled Banner and I squeaked right along with them, even on those high notes. <laughs> when we got back to school on Monday morning, though, I was a little disappointed. Mrs. Brisbane asked Saya how things went over the weekend. Fine, said Saya, and nothing more. <laughs> when an adult asks you either how your day is going or how the weekend went, do you sometimes just go, Fine. Why is that? Give us a little more. <laughs> like Miss Mac said, you can learn a lot about yourself by getting to know another species. But boy, sometimes it's a lot of work. That Monday, I sat in my cage worrying about Saya for quite a while before I dozed off. When I woke up, I noticed that room 26 had changed. The bulletin board was covered with brightly colored leaves. The tops of the chalkboards were lined with big paper witches, ghosts, and skeletons. Hanging from the light fixtures were black crepe paper bats. Hmm. Then I looked to my right and gasped. A horrible orange face with an evil grin oh, was staring right directly at me. I jumped back, my heart pounding. Oh. Hey, Humphrey, don't you like old pumpkin head? <laughs> AJ whispered to me from his seat nearby. Look, Humphrey's scared of a little old jack-o'-lantern, Garth said. Scaredy cat, scaredy hamster. I stood straight and looked as unscared as I possibly could. Can I look, see you look unscared? <laughs> Quiet Garth and AJ, said Mrs. Brisbane. Then she quickly returned to a math problem she was writing on the board. Suddenly, I noticed a little movement in the center of the room, a murmur, a change. I looked over and yes, 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 Saya had her hand up. Everyone noticed it, except Mrs. Brisbane, who had her back to the rest of us. Mrs. Brisbane, Heidi called out. Without turning, the teacher said, Raise your hand, Heidi. Now Heidi had her hand raised as well as Saya. Well, what is it? Mrs. Brisbane turned to face the class and was obviously surprised at what she saw. Yes, Saya, she said. In a loud, clear voice, Saya said, May I move the pumpkin away from Humphrey's cage? Mrs. Brisbane looked from Saya to the cage and back. Hmm. Yes, I guess it is 
a little close. Thank you, Saya. Saya rose and hurried to my table to push the ugly old jack-o'-lantern away. She didn't say a word, but she winked at me. Wink. Can I see you all wink? <laughs> and I knew what she meant. Heidi, did you want to say something? Mrs. Brisbane asked. Not anymore, she said. Everything went back to normal until the bell rang for recess. As my classmates all scattered and ran towards the door, Garth paused by my cage. Scaredy cat, he muttered. Then he moved the pumpkin right up against my cage again. <gasps> I puffed up my cheeks as big as I could get them. Hmm, it was going to be a very long day. Can I see you all puff up your cheeks? <gasps> That was good. All right. Tip number seven. When hamsters feel intimidated, they often puff up their cheeks. From Guide to the Care and Feeding of Hamsters by Dr. Harvey H. Hammer. <laughs> okay. Well, that, my friends, is the end of chapter seven. So, we learned why Saya is so quiet in class. Maybe some of you can be sometimes a little quiet in class too. Perhaps because of the reason Saya is, maybe you speak another language when you go home. And maybe you are just nervous when you speak in front of others. Maybe you still speak English when you go home, but you're still shy, that's okay. Sometimes maybe in front of certain people, you're boisterous and outgoing and then you get in front of others and you're shy. It might even vary from subject to subject. Maybe when you're in reading class and that's your strong subject or the subject that you like, you're not shy. But then maybe when you get to say math or science or something else, you're a little bit more shy. But it's worth it to take a chance sometimes. So this week, I challenge you, just like Saya challenged herself, to take a chance and speak up, even if it's just a little, because sometimes a little can make a difference. <laughs> and hopefully you don't have to have a situation this week where you have to puff up your cheeks, <laughs> students and teachers alike. Well, have a good day, everyone, and I'll see you next time for chapter... Eight. <laughs> Have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye.